Now today, I'm just going to warn you, uh, when you decide to work through a book verse by verse, occasionally you will come to a verse and have no idea what it means, how it applies to yourself, those fleshly things. If anything, our culture has made a complete shift the other way to where we've said, just do whatever pleases your flesh. That's not scriptural either. We're kind of in this place where fame and fortune, fancy vacations, debt, the brightest, the most shiny, the newest, the biggest, the best. Folks, I want you to know I'm not preaching at you this morning. God's already worked through this in my heart. I, I don't know about you, but I really do desire to follow God. And I really do want to love God with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my strength. I want to love my neighbor as myself. But unfortunately, my flesh continues to get in the way of that. I think Paul kind of summed it up in Romans chapter 7. He says, for I know the good itself does not dwell in me. That is in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Have you ever felt like that? Like, man, I know the good I want to do, but I just can't do it. I, for I, I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this I keep doing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it's the sin living in me that does it. Here's where the Apostle John picks up 1 John chapter 5, starting verse 13. He says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we what? If we, listen, I watched a guy preach last week. You guys did not do a good job answering his questions. And I have taught you better than that. I know, he says, what? If we have what? If we've asked anything and according to his will, he what? He hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that, we, uh, that what we have, what we ask of him. I, th I think what John would say is, listen, not only is reading God's word and studying it and devouring it, but he's going to say, listen, prayer is vital to those trying to be good students of God. If we've placed our faith in Jesus as God's son, then we can be confident when we come before God in prayer. I, I think one of the most missed passages lies right here. Because we get this idea of that, that if I ask God for it, he's just going to pour it out in abundance. No, it's not what scripture says. He says, if we ask anything, what? Go back. Can you go back to that passage, Gwen? If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know he hears us. The key to this whole passage is, is that God's will outweighs our wants and our desires. If we're asking for those things that line up with God's will, we can be confident of that, that he will give that to us. It's kind of like saying, you know, 
I've been praying that I had a winning lottery ticket. And God is not faithful. I have not won yet. You know why? Because they don't line up with God's will. And I know it don't line up with God's will, so I quit wasting dollars. It doesn't line up with God's will because he know that if Chris Long won the lottery, he would go completely crazy. Simple as that. It would destroy me. 1 John chapter 5, slide down to verse 16. If you see any brother or sister commit a sin that does not lead to death, you should pray. You should pray and God will give them life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin, and there is sin that does not lead to death. Now, i got to be honest with you. How many people completely understand that passage already? Welcome to my world. This discipleship process involves the idea of not only prayer, but being accountable to each other. That we help each other grow. We need other people to point out sin in our life. How, how many people like to be told you've done wrong? Yeah, that's what I thought. How, how, you, how can you judge me? The scripture said we ought, we ought to be doing that for each other. If we love our brothers, the problem is our heart when we do that. We need to be, have someone else that can speak truth and hope and grace into our lives. We need others to uh, pray for those things in our lives that are struggling, that, that those areas where our flesh is just overwhelming us. And then I got to verse 16. There is sin that leads to death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. Now, from all my study of Scripture, I thought you were supposed to pray about everything. And then I get to verse 16, and he says, I'm not saying that you should pray about that. I was perplexed and partially still am. I went through commentary after commentary after commentary, trying to figure out exactly what the Apostle John was saying. What is, uh, what is this sin that leads to death, and why shouldn't we pray about it, and doesn't all sin lead to death? Is it physical death? Is it spiritual death? After going through all that, I was frustrated, I was confused, you can ask the guys in the office as they came in. I was writing this sermon, and uh, one after the other, I asked them, I said, have you ever read 1 John chapter 5, verse 16? Oh, yeah, I read that. Uh, can you tell me what it means? I don't know. So after absolutely no help from the rest of the staff, I've come to this conclusion. It very well may be that John is referring to some type of cultural thing that was going on. It may be referring to the idea that sin that is not covered by the blood of Jesus leads to death. But the blood of Christ covers all sin. Maybe it doesn't matter what particular sin it is. Maybe what John is saying is you don't sit in the judgment seat. And boy, am I thankful that that is not my role. That I don't have to make a decision 
whether you go to heaven or you go to hell. That's not my place. My place is simply to share the love of Christ with all those around me. Amen? What I do know is all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And when that happens, the blood of Christ covers over all of those sin. Our job is not to judge others. Our job is to simply share who Jesus is and what he's done for all of mankind. John is gonna close up with just a couple verses, starting in 1 John chapter 5, starting in verse 18. He's gonna close up this whole book by talking about the most important person of all, Jesus. He says, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps him safe, and the evil one cannot harm them. We know that we are children of God and that the whole world is under the control of the evil one. We know also that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true by being in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. See, John's gonna close up this whole book with just a couple of things. First, he's gonna say God is our protection. Folks, everybody have a good Thanksgiving? Oh, okay, three of you. <laughs> three people had a good Thanksgiving. Rest of you still in turkey coma. Man, I'm going to tell you, we have a lot to be thankful for, don't we? A lot to be thankful for. God has blessed us beyond belief. And while all of that is true, what the Apostle John would say is that this world is Satan's playground. Satan is doing everything in his power to get the people of God to give up on God and themselves. Don't shh. Don't shoot her. That's how we know the church alive. Talk louder. She just said, he's preaching. <laughs> I don't think, folks, that we give Satan quite enough credit for how powerful he really is. First Peter chapter five, starting in verse eight says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion for, for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. Take courage. We're in this together. We got to support each other. We got to support our brothers and sisters around the world who are in harm's way presenting the gospel message, the good news about who Jesus is. Not only is God our protection, but God is our provider. God has provided understanding so that we may know who Jesus is. And then John closes his book with one last verse, 1 John chapter 5, verse 21. Dear children, keep yourselves from idols. Seems like kind of a strange way to close it up. But maybe, just maybe, what is an idol? It's anything that's put in God's place. I think if we went all the way back to the beginning of the message, all those things that our culture says are good for us, fame, fortune, fancy vacations, debt, the brightest, the best, the biggest, all of those things somehow seem to eke in to be our idols. 
me ask you this. What is it that's keeping you from giving your whole self to God? What parts of your life do God truly own? And what parts of your life have you not quite turned over to him? Yeah, but I, as soon as I get this part all together, then I'll give it to him. This whole book that the Apostle John wrote is about Jesus being so much better than the next cultural whatever. Anybody ever worked on anything in here? I try to avoid it too. You ever seen a, a nut and a bolt? What happens? How, do, how does that work? Okay, for some of you not mechanically people, let me help you. You have a bolt and it has threads, right? And you got this nut and you can screw it on there. And as long as all of those threads line up, it spins on there. And once it gets on there, it's on there. You, you can't just pull it apart. What? You got to unscrew it, right? Lefty loosey, righty tighty. You're welcome, in case you ever find yourself in a position you don't know which way's tight, which way's loose. You get it on there, and it becomes one union. Like, you can't, you can't get it off of there, right? But what happens if the thread's not quite lined up? Just say it loud. Be proud. If you get it wrong, we'll tell you wrong, and we'll move on. It gets stuck, right? Can't go no further. Just won't go on there, right? What happens if the threads get a little rusty? It gets stuck. Won't go, won't go on it, right? You drill it out and just forget the threads altogether. <laughs> Don't do that. WD-40, maybe that worked, right? This is my point. When all that stuff lined up, you could say God kind of liked the boat. You know, you know what part I am. <laughs> when me and him together and all our stuff line up, man, we make one tight bond that's inseparable. And when that happens, good things happen. Right? But man, there are times in my life, I'm sure there's times in your life, where for some reason, you just can't get lined up with him. It's something in, in my life that's keeping that from happening. And it just feels like it's grinding and don't go right. And occasionally, occasionally, what happens in my life Probably what happens in your life occasionally, every once in a while, need some WD-40, need old wire brush to work on me a little bit. That way I can get lined back up with the Father. Or sometimes he just drill you out, smack you in the head, whatever. God is so, so good to us. It's our hope and our desire to always be aligned with him. And here's the deal. And we get to this time of Thanksgiving and Christmas and all those different types of things. Man, if culture wasn't already at us, 
trying to get us away from who God desired us to be? Just wait till the holidays. They'll try even harder to tell you all these different things are so important. And what's really important is how the Father and I are aligned, how you and the Father are aligned. It's our hope and desire to be the best followers of Christ we can possibly be. Why? Not so we get any of the glory, but so he get all the glory. So that other people would be able to see what that relationship looks like, right? We're gonna stand, we're gonna sing this final song together, and we're just gonna take this, the next few moments to give God praise, to give him honor, to give him glory for all he's done. No matter what happens around us, no matter where culture goes or what culture says, God is always faithful, God is always true, he's always loved.